My name is James Sims. I think I was born with an addiction to TV and movies. You see, I grew up in Hollywood, well, the valley to be exact, and I'd often spend my days on movie sets. I became an entertainment reporter. Entertainment Tonight, The Hollywood Reporter. Now I'm in New York, so consider me by coastal. But even from Manhattan, I'm still in love with Hollywood glamour. Out with the old, in with the new. Hey, I'm James Sims, and welcome to Sofa Snark. Just as prime time wrapped up for the summer, Sofa Snark has a brand new look. Now, if only I could get a brand new budget. All the network execs rolled into town last week for their upfronts. Meanwhile, everything in TV land bid farewell. It was finale time on the boob tube, which means a lot of big budget episodes and crap Fantastic writing! Gossip Girl lost its unborn twin, 90210 got drunk at the prom, and J.J. Abrams kept things weird. It's all coming up on a brand spanking new edition of Sofa Snark. Gossip Girl has already ruined graduation and it's only 2 o'clock. We have to stop her. I don't know. Messing with Gossip Girl? Think of the consequences. You can't ask us to jeopardize our futures for your personal vendetta. Besides, she didn't even say anything about us. Not even Penelope. Oh, soup dumplings. This is not my personal vendetta. She attacked all of us and was wrong. The CW dealt a major blow to Gossip Girl fans. You know that 80s inspired spin-off? Yeah, say adios. It's been axed before it got off the ground. XOXO, Valley Girls. But GG's still around for superficial sass and gossipy goodness. It was season's end and those Upper East Siders were graduating. Blair and Nate are donezo, Serena was lying low after her arrest, and Dan, well, he wore a horribly brown suit. Ugh, that poor Brooklyn unhipster. Things went by way of Scooby and the Mystery Squad as the pack sought out to track down the real Gossip Girl. It's been an ab fab trashy season. Keep it coming, Gigi. See you in college. She hates you. No, look, I know she does, but she got so drunk, so I have to drive. Stop lying to me! Stop it! Naomi, I wouldn't do that to you. What are you talking about? You already have! What? Ethan, ring a bell! And I forgave you! Because apparently I was an idiot! Okay, Naomi, please stop, okay? This is crazy! <laughs> she acts like she's this innocent girl from Kansas. While those East Coast socialites were sporting caps and gowns, 90210 was rocking the after party prom scene. Well, everyone except good old Adriana and Navid, there was a little fatherless baby on the way. But much better drama was going down back at the party. Looks like Ethan is crushing on Silver. Who can blame the guy? Meanwhile, back at the hospital, Aid gave up her baby for adoption. Oh, yes, and Brenda Walsh showed back up. Let's hope such nostalgia sticks around next season. It's been a flip-flop kind of ride this year, what with show creators getting canned and story direction shifting a bit, 90210, it's still on shaky ground. Here's hoping for a smashing new season as the lead into the new Melrose freaking place. Opening with a way back flashback, Lost revealed a bit more of that crazy statue flashed upon a few episodes ago. It was season finale time for the Islanders, meaning some tidbits about the ever-elusive Jacob finally surfaced. Turns out he's been visiting all the castaways for a long time. That is until Ben shoves a blade through his heart, a shootout at the OK Corral known as the Swan, a nuke goes down the hole, and boom goes the dynamite. Fade to white. Next up, the final season, the year 2010. Hey writers, just don't blow it a la J.J. Abrams' Star Trek debacle. I'm William Bell.
mystery of Fringe was revealed during the season finale, J.J. Abrams' theory of alternate realities, lightly touched on in Star Trek, has been the entire premise of Fringe. The big secret? Joshua Jackson's character Peter died in 1985, and his dad Walter broke through to another reality and stole the alternate Peter. X-Files says what? Rockin' good stuff. Oh yeah, and Dr. Bell is none other than Leonard Nimoy! Insert shameless Trek plug joke here. Definitely looking forward to next season. Double oh seven. <gasps> oh god! Oh god! How do you sum up the two-hour season finale of Grey's Anatomy without a tear? Okay, well, just a drop of glycerin, perhaps. But still, it did get a little sad when the man under the bus turned out to be George. Did not see that one coming. Poor Georgie. Izzy, on the other hand, good riddance. Looks like a cast shakeup is headed to Seattle Grace next season. Let's just hope the writer's room gets the same kind of treatment. Oh my god, Cheryl Crow, we were best friends in elementary school. Hi, Cheryl. We're live in three, two... I'll talk two. to you later. Sometimes life brings pain and strife and all seems wrong. Jack was tempted to harvest hobo organs on the season finale of 30 Rock. Where's Giuliani when you need him? Tracy Jordan dropped out of school because he couldn't slice up a cute little froggy. Welcome to No Child Left Behind, America. Even you can drop out of school and grow up to become a ghetto comedy star with the IQ of a jackass. Then, in true SNL spoof fashion, a bunch of guest stars showed up to sing farewell. Or for a kidney. Can't quite remember. And that's a wrap. But never fear, fellow couch potatoes. TNT and HBO have some great offerings for the summer. And a few old network favorites are coming back. Can you say Pushing Daisies, Eli Stone, and Dirty Sexy Money? You've been missed. Log on to simscoop.com to catch all the primetime action. Until then, I'm James Sims, and this is Sofa Snark. Now go watch TV.